Okay, we are moving to some other disclosures. Uh, basically, we discuss about the audit planning phase about related party transaction. So, then you know that related party disclosure is a important disclosure in the financial statement. It is a significant disclosure. We have a separate accounting standard as well as auditing standard because it is a risky area. Because once we are having transaction with related parties, the transaction price may be uh, misleaded. So, then transaction price uh, may not be used, the, the, the fair value may not be used for the transaction. And then further, some of the related party transaction may not be disclosed in the other stakeholders, right. Classic example, hotel hacker directors la, the hadenek in now, the no can island wide branches, the no hotels. Uh, directors like relations la, uh, son and daughters, or yana koto hotel like a local discount humbe no, like 70 percent, 80 percent discount humbe no. A discount set te kama, pay up transaction price se kak nemi. Thode so then, if they are enjoying that facility, that should be disclosed. So then that is why, we consider that a related party transaction is a concern area. So then, as a management, there should be a proper process in the organization, proper system, proper system protocols means proper controls to identify, identify, measure and disclose related party transaction and outstanding balances and whatever the other commitments. So, then basically related party identify karagan how the kiela and a transaction uh, measure karagan and related all transaction disclose karan, outstanding imbalance disclose karan, company ke pro proper process se kak tiyan. Ek ape system driven process se kak venna pulwa, manual process se kak venna pulwa, uh, completeness ensure karan process se kak tiyan no. So, when me disclose se ka gat tod, ape related party disclose se ka gat tod, accession with yet, completeness and then existence. Uh, the accuracy may be the challenge, right? So, to ensure that we should have proper process in the organization. Samahara we take a system related process like a kwenna pulwa. Samahara companies, Godak companies. System make a dira dira no, who are the related parties? Ape SLFRS LKS24, clearly kira dira no, how the related party kira. Directors la, key management person, close family members, and then uh, if you are having a joint control uh, parties who are in the joint control arrangement and if you are having significant influence subsidiary companies and the uh, associate companies. So, then uh, we can refer the LKS 24 to identify who are the related parties, the list is there, right. So, then accordingly you have to have a proper identification. After having the identification with these parties the transaction should be measured reliably and all those transactions should be disclosed reliably. After doing the identification, what you can do is, what a system make at a dialatia and pulva, when the companies, subsidiary, associate, joint ventures, when we have incorporation numbers, close family member, directors, common directors, family members, when we have identity numbers. So, our transaction is not done, the payment is not done, the hotel is not done, the booking is not done, the system itself is not done, make a related party is not done. So, our month is not done, year is not done, our related party transaction list is not done, the system is not done. So, that is called, that will ensure the completeness of related party transactions, right. Accordingly, what you can do is, to ensure this balances, disclosures, you can perform different set of audit procedures as per, as per SLA US 550. So, the, we have separate auditing standard, the, the relating to that related party transaction according to the standard, we have to perform this set of audit procedures. Basically, we can cross check with the last year identified list and is there any changes, is there any changes from the directors, 
uh, you can check the board minutes right uh, name of the related parties and is there are any uh, arrangement with other companies any acquisition disposals any subsidiary companies right so the once you are coming to the related party transaction uh, measurement and uh, identification measurement and disclosure SLA is 550 discussing about uh, lengthy procedures right so then I have summarized here actually that should be customized according to your audit according to the industry nature of the structure of the organization right related party structure and control mechanism of the organization basically uh, uh, you have to inquire as auditor you have to inquire from the management the differences with the previous year to this year any structural changes or any uh, board of directors changes any acquisition during the period or joint ventures uh, kind of a disposals those things should be updated and uh, accordingly you can update your disclosure and then you can call confirmation from the related party about their balances right and then parallelly what you can do is uh, you are calling confirmation from the banks and you are calling some other confirmations so then all those confirmations you can add this related party uh, transaction to get confirmed right so then that is another area so then if you are having any uh, you know trust or pension fund so then what are the employments getting benefit over there so then you can evaluate that as well and further uh, so then is there a, any kind of a you know affiliate company or any sub uh, any company having uh, common control so then that should be identified and if you are having common control so then there may be common directors right so then need to identify what are the companies uh, we are having like that and so then need to be identified and need to be captured to the process right and additionally if you are having uh, uh, last year audit experience you can cross check with that understanding if you are the new auditor for this year you can discuss with the predecessor auditor as well about related party transaction and related disclosures you can cross check with their uh, disclosures as well to ensure the adequacy of your disclosure basically end of the day you need to ensure the identification measurement and disclosure adequacy according to the financial reporting framework as well case 24 and parallelly this will impact to the transfer pricing regulation in the country as well because once we are having related party transaction you know that uh, we are not using the fair price it means uh, that will impact to the profitability of the organization profitability mean uh, your taxable income taxable income may be change so then if there is a kind of a significant change to the taxable income that transfer pricing guideline will be the, should be complied with the organization some transfer pricing guideline will be applicable for this kind of a scenario so the transfer pricing can regulation in between two companies fair price use subsidiary parent company apita aduma price ekata ganne market ekin gattuth wenna price ekata ganna puluwa etakota real profit eka penne company ekak athule real profit eka penne athunama taxable profit ekak real nathi wenna etakota tax pay karanne adu profit ekak so then that will impact to the tax expense so then indian revenue department uh, putting that this is a transfer price in regulations and they do kind of a independent assessment of your income taxable income right so then those are the uh, consideration relating to related party transaction and the disclosure as a auditor so then we can move forward right so then we can move forward and uh, here we have another disclosure so then uh, that's about subsequent event disclosure so the event after the reporting period so then we have l case 10 uh, L case 10 so that according to the uh, your uh, subsequent period 
subsequent period you know that definition right so then after the financial year end uh, before you are uh, completing your financial statement before the management signing uh, audit opinion issue date management signing date in between the financial statement uh, end date end date this period considered as a subsequent period right this is the financial period so then this events may be adjusting event or non adjusting event so that is the basic background you know that right so then adjusting event is a event that is a uh, that is a event giving kind of a information about a condition we had at the reporting date so the non adjusting event is a new event is not giving kind of a uh, information about the situation we had at the reporting date is a new condition so there is not a condition we had at the reporting date if it is an unadjusting event right so that is the basic background we are discussing so then once you are having this disclosure so what are the step you have to do how it impact to your audit opinion so then auditor should evaluate so then once you are doing your testing so you need to consider uh, uh, different aspect so then we have consider about auditing standard and you can go through the company uh, company structures and subsequent journal entries and you can go through the subsequent board minutes and subsequent legal changes or uh, kind of a data evaluation uh, whether is there are uh, any process to identify the the relate the subsequent events so you need to go through the subsequent overall operation so before you are signing the financials as auditor you need to check the subsequent period transaction for that company uh, the auditor can do different audit procedures you can talk to uh, legal department and lawyers and then the bankers and you can check with the debtors again so then there may be an indication that that debtor getting bankrupt so then as at the reporting date we have not done a provision so then it's a kind of adjusting event so likewise so auditor should perform adequate audit procedures to ensure the uh, subsequent event disclosure basically we, uh, we are having we can inquire from the management and then identify subsequent events procedures by doing subsequent journal entry testing uh, likewise through audit procedures right you can check board minutes board committee minutes you can check those those things and then uh, subsequent budget cash flow forecast you can check once you are doing cash flow forecast you can check the back testing right back testing uh, any uh, litigation any once you are having your discussion with lawyers lawyers confirmation you can check that after the uh, after the reporting period uh, is there a, any kind of a update about litigations we had so then that will impact to our contingent liability disclosure as well right so then uh, according to the uh, according to the uh, given according to the procedures you have to do the proper disclosure right proper disclosure and end of the day you have to get a representation from the management about the post balance sheet uh, events uh, whether we have adequately adjusted it or disclosed it in the financial statement and then here we have a question information about the event discovered after the financial statement have been issued so then here we have issue that uh, there was a post balance sheet event that will be disclosed that will be identified after issuing the uh, after issuing the financial report so then what it means to you so then here we have the subsequent uh, post balance sheet period post balance sheet period this is not a question like uh, after the post balance sheet period there is a event we have already issued 
this what is this can't be reflected practically right this is not a issue but here question is we are identifying identifying the issue relating to this period in this period before we are issuing the financials you are you were not able to identify this that is the issue. So, then if we have such kind of a scenario such kind of a scenario. So, then definitely auditor should inform to the management and accordingly they have to take a action over there. So, then if that depends on the significance of the disclosure significant of the event right. So, then based on the significance you need to take action and that can be uh, communication that can be uh, the, that can be changes to the financial statement or kind of amendment or that can be done. So, then that is a kind of a area need to be done by auditor and the management and uh, with a with a good understanding and uh, based on the significant significance of that uh, activity or event. So, then that is about subsequent event disclosure. So, then according to the nature and the business you can customize the discussed audit procedures. Basically, we are doing this audit procedure substantive as a substantive audit procedure because that is at the year end right. Right. So, then uh, we can move forward we can move forward and subsequent event uh, disclose the event related procedures done. So, then uh, we discuss about this question as well and uh, we are moving to going concern actually this was discussed at the planning stage as well as a management uh, as a board of directors before you are preparing financial statement going concern assumption is the basic assumption we are we are taking a taking to prepare the financial statement right. So, the going concern assumption like a uh, base karagena thamai api financial statement hadan financial statement hadana kota api the foreseeable future karagata company ka thiyana ma kiyana assumption like in hadana nisa thamai we are having this current liability current asset uh, long term liability. Uh, we are having that classification and we are using cost method right cost method they can use karna wana pp and me cost method they can use karna wana api valuation malata disclosures malata eka api pay in ne api realize karan na near future ita kota api 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 going concern na thang api to cost basis sekate anna bae api breakup basis sekate anna wana so then Going concern assumption is a critical aspect the management should focus and management should take a good uh, you know the uh, strong assumption they should have proper evidence to that and then the auditor side also we need to ensure whether company having going concern ability to uh, operate for foreseeable future. So, then we have separate auditing standard relating to that 570 accordingly auditor should perform audit procedures right. So, then if there is a kind of indication to challenge to the going concern assumption definitely we need to perform audit procedures uh, to identify this uh, uh, kind of indications and then what we have to do is uh, if there are any identified indication accordingly you need to perform your audit procedures. So, basically uh, if there is a kind of a serious loss or continuous losses you can have kind of a futuristic cash flow forecast and then you can talk to your director board and director committee meeting cash flow plan you can evaluate that and then uh, based on the budgeted numbers you can evaluate the possibility of having uh, probable profits right and then uh, once you are having uh, kind of a covenants breaches or legal non-compliances uh, different set of indications impacts to the going concern assumption. 
සමහර වෙලාවට කී කස්ටමර් කෙනෙක් නැති වෙන්න පුළුවන් ලෝකල් රෙගියුලේෂන්ස් වලට අලුත් ලෝ එකක් එනවා එතකොට මේ ඔපරේෂන් එක ට ඉම්පැක්ට් එකක් වෙන්න පුළුවන් ඊට පස්සේ මොනම හරි ඔපරේෂන් එකක් නවතිනවා වෙන්න පුළුවන් දැන් අපිට හයිවේ හයිවේ ඉන්ට්‍රොඩියුස් කරාම නෝමල් වේ එකේ තිබුණු ට්‍රාන්ස්පෝටේෂන් ඇස්පෙක්ට්ස් අඩු වෙන්න පුළුවන් එතකොට ගොයින් කන්සර්න් ඉෂ්යු එකක් එන්න පුළුවන් එතකොට අර පොලිටිකල් ඇස්පෙක්ට් එකේ ඩිසිෂන් ඉකොනොමිකල් ඩිසිෂන් මේ බී ඉම්පැක්ට් ටු ද කම්පැනි ගොයින් කන්සර්න් රයිට් එතකොට අපි ඒවා චෙක් කරගන්න කොහොමද ගොයින් කන්සර්න් ඉෂ්යු එකක් තියෙනවද ඒක අපි චෙක් කරගන්න වෙන්න පුළුවන් බෝඩ් මිනිස්ට් බලල රීඩ් කරලා තියෙන්න පුළුවන් ෂෙයා හෝල්ඩර් මිනිට්ස් ඇන්ඩ් දෙන් ලෝයර්ස් ලගින් අත අහලන පුළුවන් අපිට කම්පැනි එකට ලොකු ලීගල් කේස් එකක් තියෙනවද එතකොට මේකේ ලොකු ඉම්පැක්ට් එකක් වෙයිද බැලන්ස් ෂීට් එකට වී කැන් එන්ෂුර් දැට් ඇන්ඩ් දෙන් වී කැන් ඇසස් ද ෆයිනැන්ෂල් ඇබිලිටි වී කැන් ඇසස් ද ෆයිනැන්ෂල් ඇබිලිටි by using uh, ratios right company strength of the, the balance sheet is strength financial position we can evaluate right uh, so then as i this cut if we can if we can't fulfill some of, some of the customers according to the quality issues according to the delays some of the customers we are losing right if it is so that will directly impact to our going concern ability so then those are the things need to be considered but it depends on the nature so then according to the this procedures we need to identify whether is a real going concern challenge or not so then if it is a real going concern challenge we need to inform to the management to have kind of a mitigating plan if they are unable to have a mitigating plan definitely so then financial statement approach should be different so then they have to prepare the break up basis financial statement so then that financial statement can't be have kind of a current non current liability all the assets should be current asset all the liabilities should be current liabilities uh, value should be in the market value not the cost basis right so then that is the impact to the financial statement accordingly you can issue the audit opinion if there are any limitation any scope limitation so then you can qualify you can emphasize the matter so then the, those will be discussed under audit report in aspect right so then we are going forward uh actually we discuss about uh, many transactions many significant balances and disclosures now we are moving to uh, very basic concept audit sampling i'm not going to uh, discuss in detail but the basic concept audit sampling so the as auditor as you already discussed we are issuing the audit opinion based on the sampling basis right we are not checking 100% we don't want to do that because we are not supposed to issue absolute opinion right uh, then the, we are having the audit sample and the audit population right so then once you are doing this sampling we can select statistical sample and non statistical sample according to the sla us 530 right we have separate auditing standard uh, we can use statistical method we can use non statistical judgmental method to select sample right so once you are the basic concept is once you are selecting sample uh, that sample should represent the population so that, that is called we have to reduce the sampling gap sampling gap right that's the basic concept uh you can you can go for the uh, under sampling we can discuss different sampling risk non sampling risk and sampling unit and stratification sampling risk mean uh, we are selecting sample what's the purpose to evaluate the population some of the instance after selecting the sample sample results not reflect the population our objective may not be achieved 
So, then the deviation from the expectation may be a risk that is called sampling risk right and non sampling risk api sample like a select karagan eke varadi nevi api in a conclusion eke varadi venna pulwa api gan api api sample like a harita select karla dena api karan procedures will varadi venna pulwa so then errors can happen as not a result of selecting the sample in other reasons that is called non sampling risk right uh, sampling unit api sample like a Sample like a population like a Sample like a represent when items are the sampling unit kiyana, right? Uh, and then stratification. Api muka the karana sample like a gatot population like a represent karana api stratification karana pulan. Stratification can muka. Wagi sample like a pi uh, sub product caliber to kadana, sub group word to kadana. Api school like a students like a gatot. Api take no sample like act then again. Sample like act then a cure, api moka the can. Api A level class a came a gato, that is not a good sample, right? So then we have to have subgroups. Api take grade 5 well in tika then a girls la tika, boys la tika, neither. So the teachers la select karagan, teachers la gents, ladies, they came a select karagan. So what api take population like a venas karagan on a subgroup per the kadala. After uh, sampling gun ke ne ke tamai, uh, stratification ne ke ne. so then we have to deviate the population for subgroup and we can do the sampling. So then it will reduce the sampling gap, sampling risk, right? Right. Once you are reading this uh, uh, sampling uh, related auditing standard, we are having four different methods to select sample that is called random selection, systematic selection, monitoring sampling, haphazard selection. So, actually it is a very basic concept you can easily understand how you are going to select a sample from a population right. So, then you can randomly select without having any mechanism you are giving same priority for each and every item. So, let us say you are having payment uh, portfolio, payment portfolio having uh, different uh, different uh, payments right 2 million payment and 5 million payment and 500,000 payment right and then 150, 150 payment and then again we have 500 payment millions with 500 right. So, then we are having 5 transactions 5 transactions we are giving same priority to same priority, same uh, probability for selection to the sample that is called random sampling without considering the value we are giving same priority that is called random sampling, random selection. Systematic selection, so then you are, you are having kind of a stratification, you are having a kind of a grouping and uh, you are having kind of a systematic selection like uh, in a portfolio you have 150 items, 150 items first 10 you are selecting 2, second 10 you are selecting another 2. Likewise, uh, you are having uh, 30 items, 30 items uh, within another 10, uh, within the 10 intervals, 15 intervals you have for 150 items. 150 uh, 2 into 2 into uh, 15 30 items will be selected that is called systematic selection right. So, then api transaction mass of dollar ka transaction thi no. Ika mass akin transaction paha gaane select karna no. it is a systematic selection right. So, then that is easy that is depend on the nature monetary unit sampling api the methana monetary unit taken on priority ka then 2 million 5 million mulimma select karagan so then we are giving high priority to high value items monetary unit sampling haphazard selection based on the judgment you can select your sample based on the risk and the judgment so likewise we are having different sampling methods that can be used for your toc plus substantive procedures this is a common topic we are discussing here right and 
once you are selecting a sample so here is the population and the sample the items are two different items are there key items and the representative sample key item and the representative sample so then you need to identify key items so then once you identify the key items you can base on your scope scope derived from the CRA combined risk assessment combined risk assessment according to combined risk assessment you have tolerable error plus percentage right you can give as the scope about this scope what are the items maybe key items key items and some other representative sample some other items you are selecting to represent the overall portfolio right some of the instance um, you are your overall portfolio items item wise may be very small balance the total balance may be 10 million so then you do not have key items but you may have representative sample in your sample right so then those are the things we need to consider once you are selecting sample and then uh, once you are doing the sampling process you need to determine the objective characteristic of the population you should identify and you should understand that first right and determine sample size method uh, choose the sampling method and project the errors and evaluate in the results so then this is the sampling process so after whatever the procedures you are doing uh, you do sample basis right as we discussed once you are deciding sample sampling process you have to uh, identify the population characteristics nature of the population and firstly you need to ensure the accuracy of the population so if it is a system report we need to validate the system report data right ensure the completeness of the population and then determine the sample size whether you are going to select 10 20 25 that depends on your uh, global methodology or your judgment right and what is the method you are use, going to use that should be appropriate for your purpose right and then projecting errors uh, so after having a population what you have to do is uh, any exception you identify you need to add you need to project that to the population right so then let us say your population 150 right you selected only 10 from this 10 you identified two, two items are misleaded for 10 two items misleaded so then for 10 two items for 150 how many items may be that is the projection you have to do right as li likewise you need to if you are based on a sample once you are getting your decision based on the sample results you have to uh, you have to project that errors to the population that is the key part of your decision making process right so that is the basic process of sample selection and uh, sampling that can be used for your substantive procedures and TOC which we have already discussed right so then all together we are coming to the end of gathering audit evidence right so then we have already covered four parts four parts actually uh, we covered four parts here part one two three four right accordingly we covered the elements of balance sheet statement of financial position and income statement and other disclosures so then uh, as auditor as we discuss we need to ensure we need to ensure the balances disclosures and transactions you know that uh, we are supposed to we are supposed to issue the audit opinion right audit opinion audit opinion for draft financials draft financial draft financial statements consisted with what account balances and disclosures 
account balances and disclosures came because of transactions. So then we selected significant accounts and significant disclosures. For the significant accounts and disclosures, we perform audit procedures here. So then identify significant account revenue, cost of sales, uh, salaries, intangible asset, creditors. We know about or we perform about audit procedures. We perform adequate audit procedures means test of controls and substantive procedures, right? So then that based on your audit approach, according to the scenario, according to the case study given by the examiner, you need to decide your audit procedure, right? Accordingly, uh, you can get your audit conclusion. Audit conclusion means after once you are doing these procedures, once you are doing these procedures, you are identifying what? You are identifying maybe misstatements, misstatements or scope limitation. This difficult, two difficulties may be identified through audit this through this audit procedure or there may audit procedure set take a karagane anakota what auditor with the other what are challenges they can kind of pull on or misstatements identify karagana or scope limitation identify karagana so that be section after the king kata kar audit procedures well the what i keep common can a podu lakshana balagan pull on hama ek ema api kata kar a significant account take a mock up they keep process take a mock up there process ekam mukakda it pass the business risk ekam mukakda audit procedures ko homada kare audit approach ek ko homada decide kare toc karana wada nadda full substantive karana wada karala ever unata passe karan ona api katha karapu sample basis walat right karala unata passe whatever the significant account whatever the disclosure what mukakda wenne what a henama audit findings kiyala a audit findings can be divided into two that may be misstatements, that may be scope limitations. According to the, this misstatements and uh, scope limitations, we are going to summarize all those things. We are not going to summarize and inform to the management. And after informing to the management what they are doing, they are agreeing to correct these things. Scope limitation, reply, rectify. Misstatement ekak tiyena ke ome entry ekak dala hadana corrected misstatement. E hadana eva eva e scope limitation when reply can ne vai evaluate kar la value ome. Api te ende ke ituru eno misstatement not corrected, not corrected misstatement, uncorrected misstatement, and scope limitation still prevail. So then according to the list we are having, remaining list ekar ge na bala na ma. Hadapunati, a can a finding which correct Karapunati audit findings, so misstatements, so scope limited to list take Aragana, Api audit opinion neck issue Karana, evaluate Karno, evaluate Karana, use Karan Mukad. We have to compare with our maturity levels. Maturity levels with the transaction level, maturity level, as well as the financial statement level, maturity level. So, after comparing with this maturity level and the remaining misstatement and the scope limitation, we are supposed to issue the audit opinion that is called audit reporting. Audit reporting in section 10, section 10, we have to talk about the audit report. We have to identify the misstatement and scope limitation impact. So, then we will meet up with the section 10 about audit reporting.